Hi, I'm Tessa and welcome to Little Lady Homestead. I'm standing in the bunny yard, or rather the summer bunny yard, because I plan on moving these guys up closer to the house just like I did with my chickens and my goats. We are standing about 250 feet away from our closest power source, and so it is getting so cold almost the entire day that their water stays frozen for most of the day. And I really want to save myself from coming out here twice a day to fill up their water with fresh water. So I want to move them closer to the house so they can have a heated water source. They have been here since spring is when I built this bunny yard. And it was meant for two bunnies, which I think would have been fine. But then we had a surprise litter and then there were five bunnies. And so they ate down most of the grass in here anyway. So I'm going to have to start feeding them hay. I might as well have them up there by the chickens and the goats. That'll make my life a lot easier. So before I can get them set up up there, I have to build them a shelter and I have a few things in mind. So I'm going to show you the two options that I have and then build it and then I can get them moved. So if you watched my videos on raising my Cornish crosses this year, then you probably saw this <laughs> impromptu build that I wanted to be kind of like a chicken tractor or really just a shelter for them as they moved around. And I used this for their whole life from when they were chicks until uh, they were processed. So I have these sitting around. We won't use these until the spring when we get more chicks. And so I could use this. The problem with this is it does not have a bottom at all. It's straight on grass, which is great because if there's any grass, then they have access to eat it. However, they could easily burrow under it or even if the ground was unlevel, they could slip under. So I'm not sure that this was the best option until I was down in the old yard and I found some old wire fencing that I nabbed. I was driving the go-kart and put it in the back and brought it back up with me. So we'll see how that's coming along, if that can improve this setup. So I found this wire fencing and it was actually exactly what I wanted and it was just laying down there in the old yard. I think this is wide enough spacing that they can still get grass in between, but it's narrow enough that they can't burrow under. So I have been cutting this and then wrapping it around the base to affix it. And then also in the hayloft, we found these metal panels. So once we turn this over, or I could figure out how to attach this to the top at least on the other side because there is a cross panel that goes over and that can provide some shelter. And we also do have, these, of what, these are what we have been using. It's actually half of a dog house. <laughs> but if you turn it over, then it becomes a good little den. And so that's what they've been using the past year. So that could go inside of there. So the benefits of this is that I already made two of these, so I have a couple mostly ready to go. I just need to finish adding this wire and then figure out how to attach the metal roofing panels onto the top. And also because this comes in contact with the grass, any grass that is still green and edible over the fall and into the winter, they could eat. <laughs> Uh, but the negatives are, I don't have enough of the metal panels to completely cover, okay, <laughs> to completely cover the top and the sides. And I really would like to have the sides covered to give them at least three si or four sides of protection. So three sides and the top. And I just don't have enough panels to do that. And it does get pretty windy, especially over there where they're going to be. So I do like to offer those three sides of protection more than just their little dog house there. So this is a good option, but I'm not quite sure if it's the best one. So I'm going to go take a look at um, what else I have and see what will work best. So here's the other option I was considering using. These are raised planter boxes that we made about two years ago. We actually made them in California and then shipped them with us because we weren't sure what type of garden space we would have. Maybe we would start our garden with these. 
or maybe we could repurpose them. And so they've just been sitting here and I thought, wait a minute, I have something that's raised and it is enclosed on four sides right now. I could make a roof for this and take off one of these boards and it would be a nice enclosed space to keep them warm. Also, one of my main goals for building something like this is because I would like to catch their manure and so I can use hardware cloth on the bottom here. Right now there's just chicken wire inside that helps keep in landscape fabric and dirt. So I could replace that with hardware cloth and then their manure could drop down and I could collect it for my garden. We're right next to the garden or rather in the garden right now. So it'd be perfect to have some ready for spring um, when I start planting. So I have some materials um, that I can build a roof for this. I think that this might be nice because it it gives them a little bit more protection and it gives me the benefit of being able to catch their manure. So I might try this option and see how it works. <laughs> I can always go back to the chicken tractor or a rabbit tractor idea if this doesn't work out. Hi Ranger. Yes, you go kitty. So let's see, I am probably just going to bring my materials over here. We just drilled in screws here, so I will take off this board. That way they can see out, <laughs> even though it won't be fully enclosed, they'll be able to see out and I'll just maybe staple the hardware cloth onto there on this front side and then in the bottom, and then I'll have to make the roof. So we'll see how that works out. Also, I forgot to add why I would need two of these. Ridley and Benjamin are the original bunnies and they are a male and a female. Benjamin is neutered, but Ridley is a female and she is not spayed. And so now that she has three sons, I would like to separate her from the sons so that we don't have any additional accidents because we did that once, we learned our lesson hopefully, and it won't happen again. So they'll be in two separate enclosures here. Also, their existing hutch that is in their rabbit yard, it's falling apart. It was just a cheap plywood, China-made hutch that really served its purpose and it's basically dead. So I'm going to have to start with something new. I was just shopping in Matt's garage again to see what I could use for this project and I found a big sheet of plywood that I think might be perfect. So I'm going to measure it to see if it will work for being a lid for those planter boxes. Each one is four feet by two feet. So I need a total of eight feet by two feet. And I think it might work. Uh-oh, the cat is attacking. All right, that is eight feet. That is just about two feet, so I think that'll work out perfectly. So I think then, having this plywood as my base, I'm going to attach the metal panels on top. Like that. And then add a hinge to attach to the planter box or now the new rabbit hutch and then probably a latch on the front so that it doesn't fly up. So I'm going to cut this wood in half and then I will attach the metal and then get it attached to the new rabbit hutch. All right, so I'll cut this board. So I think this is my idea. I wanted to add some pitch to the roof so that when it rains and snows, it'll come off. So we're going to add a two by four here and use this wood in the back to basically make a, a bracket so I can screw it into the planter and then into this new two by four. And then there will be a hinge that fits between the lid and this two by four here so that we'll be able to open it up and then the metal pieces will go over.
I just got this front board off and the lid is on and functional. So now all I think I have to do is cut some hardware cloth to size to fit on the bottom here and on the front and then I'll just staple it in place. And then we should be good. All right, so it is day two and last night I just finished the lid, the roof, and I just got the existing chicken wire that was already in here out. Oh, drop it, good girl. And so now I need to measure the hardware cloth so that I can put it in here. I think it was 55 inches. all the hardware cloth placed in there and now I'm going to start stapling it. <laughs> Installed. It seems pretty sturdy. I got it all the way around the inside. So I think technically it's done, but since I started the project, I thought of one more thing that I wanted to do, including this board. The last thing I'm interested in doing is closing off this gap that's in here. And I have the front board that I took off from the front of here. And so I might cut it to about this size to fit right underneath here and then just drill in. And that way, it's not perfect. Obviously there is still wind that'll come through here, but it will help trap a little bit more of the heat at the top. So I think I might add that on there. So I think this is exactly what I wanted. That was simple enough and I got that a little bit more enclosed. So now I think the only thing that I wanna do, because it's completely open on the bottom and that's going to let a lot of cold air in, I want them to have part of an enclosure in here so that they can escape any wind chill and kind of put a lot of hay and burrow in. I was thinking about using this storage tote and putting it in on, in the corner here and then cutting a hole in the lid so that they can get in, but then they have all this burrow area where I can fill that up with hay.
All right, so I think I have the finished product here. It took me probably a total of three hours to make. Leave it. So here's what we have inside. I have their heated water bowl and their hay feeder. And then I made that little burrow hole for them that's full of hay so that they'll stay nice and warm. And hopefully they'll poop out here and the manure will fall out and we can collect it for the garden. So I'll go get them. What do you think, Bun Buns? That water bowl is so big, but that was the smallest one that I could find that was heated, so we'll just make it work. Also, their den is quite large, so there's not much space in there. So this is really just meant for two rabbits, but we had two, <laughs> two rabbits that flew the coop and they are out at large. And so it might take me a little while to catch them again, <laughs> to get them into a house up here. So this is really just meant for Ridley and Benjamin, but since Clover was the only other one, I put him in here too. And then we'll build a second house for the boys once we catch them. That way they have a little bit more room. But I think it worked out pretty well. All right, so project complete. Hi Lucy, are those the bun buns? I think it worked out pretty well. I was able to do this project at least 95% on my own. And I'm sure nobody will be asking me where I bought this because it's definitely not professional, but I made it work. And at the very least, it'll keep their water from freezing. It will keep them a bit warmer during the winter and also close to the rest of the animals. This is the new barnyard now where we have the goats and the chickens and the bunnies together. And so they're right outside our back porch and we'll be able to keep an eye on them. We don't have to walk up and down any hills to take care of them and we can see them from the back porch. The only other thing I might do, I might actually turn this around. That way their little viewing window here is facing south so that they get sun in the morning. I think they'll appreciate that. I like being able to see them from the house, but I think it's more important that they get sun. So I'll probably just move them around tomorrow, but they're all huddled up in their, um, in their house that I made them out of that storage tote. So I'm glad that I finally got this done. It's been on a project list for a few weeks now and we'll see how the bunnies like it. And if I can wrangle and get those other two bunnies that are loose, then I'll make another one of these because we have um, everything that we need to make a second one. All right, well, that's it for this video. Thank you so much for watching Little Lady Homestead and I'll see you in my next one. And here's the new view from our back door. To me, it can't get any better. I love seeing them all out the back. I know it won't stay like this, but I'll enjoy it throughout the winter.